Hi everybody. Several people have asked about capos over the years and it's an interesting gadget to say the least and it's incredibly helpful but it's often misunderstood. So I want to do a, a quick little history of the capo and also demonstrate how it can be useful to all of you as you play music uh, just by yourself to sing along or when you play in a group and they change keys and, and put these funny little gadgets on the necks of their instruments. So without further ado, the word capo comes from the word capostato. And if you take a look at this, you'll see what I'm saying. It's talking about. Here it is. Capotesto. Capotesto. Italiano. Capotesto. So what does that mean? Well, a capo is head, like the head of the mafia, like organized crime capos. Uh, and testo refers to key or to fret. So uh, the head key, basically. And it was invented around the 1700s uh, and originally was a very simple piece of metal that just clamped on to an instrument to change its key. So I'll show you a couple of pictures of those real quick. This is probably the simplest capo that you might see that was first invented and just slipped over the neck of an instrument. And then a little later, they got fancier and put a little screw on there so they could adjust the tension. Uh, so this le the leather part in the back here would go around the back of the instrument and this would go on the fret. And they kept evolving over the years. Here's another example of one. You can see where the fret, the back would go, uh, in this part here would go on the back of the instrument. And here's another one. Uh, I guess it, it reminds me of my friend uh, Rick who collects mouse traps and spark plugs and you could probably collect capos the same way and have a whole assortment going back in time. This one's starting to look a little more like what we see uh, coming into play in the 1900s. And then these look very familiar to everyone, I'm sure, with the rubber strap and the bar across here that would uh, hold against the fret to change the key. And uh, then we got into the last cam style. These are sometimes called shub tune, uh, capos, uh, and they have a clamp on the back that uh, makes them really easy to release. There's just a few uh, capos in time here. So. so again, here here are a few. Here's here's a capo you might run into. It goes around the back of the instrument and then clamps on. Uh, here's one that just is a quick little uh, clamp as well. These are all handy. Um, here's one that's pretty cool because it has a little metal flange on the bottom that goes behind the fret. Um, this one's called a perfect pitch. I'll talk a little bit about that later. And then this is one you'll see from time to time. It has a little gate and it can go up on the back of the, the top of the instrument and hide up there. And then when you need it, you just pull this open, slide it down and clamp it on. So, and you can adjust how tense this is here. So those are just a few capos. My go-to capo is a shub capo. This one is about 35 years old. It's been to war. Uh, I've had to put some tape on it. It still works fine. Uh, and again, this is that cam feature that it has where it goes up and down like that and then locks in place. So you can adjust how tense it is with the screw. And then once you get it there, it'll just maintain that tension and uh, you get a nice quick change of key. So how do we use capos? Let's talk about that. So I'm going to demonstrate this on a banjo because most all of you are banjo players, but this will apply to guitar as well. So uh, when I'm in the key of G on a banjo, just open G, the G key of G is based on this straight across gadget right here called the nut. And the nut can then, if you think about it, if we move the nut up, it would raise everything 
one half step. So we go from G to G sharp. And then we could go up another one and we could play A. All right, so why is that important? Well, let me demonstrate. Here's a song played in the key of G. Uh, okay, a little cripple creek. Now, if I put a capo on here, and I will do that, and I go up here and I clamp it right on the fret, just behind it a little bit, and now, now that pitches up. It was here, now it's here. Now on a banjo, we also have to raise the fifth string. So you all know that there's these things called railroad spikes. I'll talk about those in a second. But they're essentially a, a nail with a head and you slide the string under and then that raises the pitch of that up as well a whole step. So I raise that two frets. So everything proportionally is the same now. Okay? Sometimes you have to tweak the tuning a little bit. Anyway, here's Cripple Creek now. So it's brighter, it's higher. If I go up another two frets to here, and I take that out and I play it here. Now you'll notice I played it exactly the same way in terms of the fingerings and the picking, but the pitch went up. So I don't have to figure out a different way to play the song if I use a capo, I can still do the same thing with it. So, okay, so the biggest advantage of a capo is that if you learn a song in a particular key and then your friends say, oh, I can't sing it in that key because it's too high or it's too low, you can often just use a capo and then move to a position that um, will match up with the vocalist. So for example, if I'm singing uh, One black morning when the stay is over I'll fly away and a soprano comes in and says I want to sing it in the key of A and you do your little capo thing and you go One black morning or they say I want to do it in B flat and you go One black morning or even here morning and you can cape all the way up here and play the whole I can play way up here but I can't sing it up there but I can play it and I use the same chords and I go to C chord now we'll come back to this in a second that's not a C chord anymore is it but we'll talk about that in just a second so that's that's the a big advantage also a lot of fiddle tunes are played uh, in the key of A or D, and you may have learned them in the key of G or C. So if you have, then you just slap on a capo uh, and play it in A. And then, once you do that, you're matched up with the other instruments. Now the one thing you have to remember is that you're in a different landscape. You're not playing here anymore. You can't play like uh, Cripple Creek. You can't do it the way you did because it's you're going to the wrong fret. So you have to, in your mind, shift everything to frets. Now that gets a little tricky when you start and you start doing melodic things. Everything has to shift. Um, so when it you have to start practicing some of these songs with a capo on in order to get really skilled at switching between those. And obviously that's a little more advanced technique, but it's not a bad idea to start out with some of your uh, basic songs, Cripple Creek, uh, Rolling in My Sweet Baby's Arm. That kind of thing. So you get comfortable playing even Scruggs style or Melodic style at those um, with the capo on. And just get your vision set up and your hand and everything so you can see better.
Here we go. Okay, so when we play uh, chords, we can think of those chords as letters G, C, D, E minor, A minor, etc. Or we can think of them in terms of how they function. So in the key of G, and this is a little tricky, but bear with me. If you're in the key of G, and you switch back and forth between G and C, that's a relationship that it, if I put a capo down and do that, it's going to have the same relative sound. But if I put a capo here at the second fret, and I look at what the names of these notes are, now this note right here has gone up to an A, so that's now an A chord, and this is a D chord. Here's my root of the chord that I normally play on a C right there. Is Now it's a D, and then this chord is an E. So they're, we number them one, and then the four chord, G, A, B, C, and then the five chord, E, G, A, uh, A, B, C, D, E. Here we are at E. Okay. So one, four, five. So a one, four, five is going to sound the same no matter where I play it. And I go here. It, so you don't have to think so much about the name of the chord as you do the shape that you've already learned it in. I hope that makes sense. So let's want, do one more example. Let's talk about the key of C. The one chord is a C. Here's the root. The four chord is F, C, D, E, F. And the five chord is G, C, D, E, F, G. Okay. Now if I put a capo on and I want to play in the key of D, I got to go up C, C sharp, D. I go up two frets. And now I can play in the key of D. Right, so uh, uh, here's uh, So I'm playing that, I can't sing that high, but somebody else might be able to, and I can play it in the key of, of a C shape using that shape to play uh, in the key of D because I've moved everything up two frets. Um, so that's, that's a basic uh, flyover of these things. Now, there's another thing that can happen with capos that's pretty cool. If I want to play in the key of E, I can just play here and play like my normal key of D. So I learn songs in the key of G, C, D, I'm going to be in pretty good shape to play in the keys of G, A, even B. If I put, learn C, I can play in C, D, or E. Maybe even F if I want to go way up here. Um, I can also play uh, out of the uh, one more shape. Okay, I'm going to scratch that last thought. Let's not worry about that for right now. Um, okay, so I think that covers the basics. Um, at some point. Um, I'll do a theory, uh, Nashville theory video again, update that, and, and help see how that connects with the, uh, the different positions. But for now, the main takeaway of this is if you learn to play a song in the key of G, you can play it in G sharp, A, B, C, and D by putting a capo on and adjusting the fifth string. If you know how to play the song in C, you can play it in C, C sharp, D, as long as you put a capo on to adjust. And if you've learned it in D, you can play D, D sharp, E, etc. So you cover a lot of different keys um, just by using a capo. Um, okay, that's that's it for now. Um, makes me think I should do a video about being able to read guitar chords. So. I may do that at some point, but for now, that's it.
Good luck with this. Hope this helps understand capos a little better. Capitasto to you too.